Welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am David, your co-host tonight, and tonight I am joined with special guest co-host Mallory Kuhn. Mallory, how are you? Hello, I am lovely. I'm very excited to be here in Chicago recording an episode with you. Yeah, so um, some of our legacy listeners know you quite well from probably season three, season two, maybe not two, but definitely three and four. We, we had you on a lot. We had a big, it was when all our blog writers were doing all the yeah. different episodes and all that kind of stuff. And um, I think the most recent episode that you and I did was the Princess Zelda's episode. Oh, yeah. Maybe that was season three. Like early season. It might have been the second episode of season three, if not season four. Yeah, we recorded that peek behind the curtain. We recorded that when I came to your Christmas party like a couple years ago. A couple years that ago. Was, that was pre that was pre-COVID. Three wasn't living it? places ago. <laughs> oh my was. god. Well, okay, yeah. Um it was it was kind of like post COVID. It was like Oh, it was, it was in twenty twenty. It was, it was post like post the, the lockdowns. Wave. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was the you know how COVID kind of came back with a second and third wave. Yeah. It was right after the first wave. And it was like, okay, you can kind of right? get like 10 people in a room kind of together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember yeah. that. Oh, I do remember that because I came to Chicago from, I'm from Michigan for, again, peek behind the curtain. And um, <laughs> in Michigan, like nobody took anything seriously. But in <laughs> Tell Chicago, us more of this Michigan. You yeah, where of. is this Michigan place? Let me, let me peek behind the curtain. But we had to like, you know, show our like cards and stuff to like prove that we were not. Oh. Uh, you know, because you're traveling more than whatever that distance carriers. was. Remember, if you go yeah, more yeah, than yeah, that, or you yeah. go to a different state or something, <laughs> mm-hmm. it got weird for me. I couldn't go to Kenosha and see my family for a while. Oh, no, in. even though it's like lockdown. an hour and a half away. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I could go to Palatine, I could go to St. Louis, but I <laughs> yeah, couldn't go to Kenosha. Go to Kenosha. <laughs> an hour, an hour, of, um, um, an hour north or whatever. We did sneak to Kenosha a few times, honestly, <gasps> back then. But I also COVID tested going there and coming back way back know. in the day. That was like many, many, mo- many years ago. I almost said months ago, years months. ago. I mean, technically it was many months ago, just more many months. So, Mallory, you've been hanging out <laughs> in Michigan. A Michigander, is that what you said your guys yes, are called Yes, Michiganders, today? yes. Michigander. We taught David a new word today. <laughs> yeah, we were walking around the city and you were like, well, whatever. Well, I don't even know what you said, but it blew my mind. And then I was like, oh, because I was like, no, you mean, well, like, like a Wisconsinite? Yeah. I was like, yes. But a a Michigan. But from Michigan. <laughs> a Wisca- a Wiscander. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> I see why it's Wisconsinite and Michigander. Yeah, and Michigander. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so you are on a little bit of like a little micro book tour right now. Yeah. Slightly for your book, Thick of Thieves, but really for... Wait, oh no, Among Thieves? Yeah, kind of? I mean, is it Among Thieves? Is it Thick? Because Thick's the one that kind of just came out. Yeah, Thick's the one that just came out. I'm actually uh, kind of making my own tour. So I um, I actually went I went to Kenosha um, to host the book launch. I was um, geeking out that you yeah. were in my hometown. I was, like, you were blocks David. away from my yeah. old art gallery. It was like, oh. And there you were. Like, oh, so weird. Oh, he was and like, was where'd here. you go to lunch? He knows all the places. Uh <laughs> It was great. One of my high school friends was in your Instagram photo, yes. Meg Boney. It was awesome. That was pretty cool. It was a small world moment. Um, but yeah, so I hosted a book launch for another author while I was there. And then I'm going um, to the west side of Michigan for some stuff after this. Um, so I was like, well, I'm driving right through Chicago. Yeah. So like maybe I just stop by and we do some episodes. So. I've stayed in touch with all the black writers. You and I have stayed in touch about some other projects and other things. And when you learned that you were coming through Chicago, I think we just realized we could line up our schedules. Yeah. And and I was I was kind of jonesing for another Mallory episode anyway. It had been almost two seasons. <laughs> right. Anytime, any, so that sometimes it's like me going to people. But the new rule is anytime any of the blog writers or anything come through Chicago, yeah. and this is kind of what we did for the beginning of season six as well. You know, we've had Kevin on now and a few other people have come through. Um, it's like, well, we got to do an AZP episode. Right. If you're going to be here, I mean, we're right yeah. here. Might the one thing well. I'm grateful for is that you could have driven straight through, but we made it made an official stop here. And so <laughs> I think did. that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I could have just waved as I drove by, but no. I would have been, like, been like, what are your thoughts on the music of Wind Waker? Right. I'd be like, I love it. Okay, thanks. Bye. So that is our episode tonight. We are doing Music of Wind Waker, yes. and we actually picked this one a long time ago. I am so excited. We picked this episode topic almost a year and a half ago yes. because it was the like, what if there's another Mallory episode or another what you know what yeah, I mean? Like, what would if, it be? if we cross paths again, it was a little bit of maybe making of Wind Waker. Wind Waker music was in there because Wind Waker is your game. Oh yeah. Well, which, it's, which, yeah, it's I'm excited because about. it's it's because it's nostalgic for me. I recognize the flaws of the game. Don't think I don't. Was it your but first? Is it was it that? my first there Zelda that yeah. I ever played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like you it just just feels like coming home to play it. You you get it. So I do. I've, I've heard the the rumors. Maybe you'll know more whether they're solid or not. That that it's coming to Switch. I well, I've, I've I've been saying heard, for years that I think it's inevitable. I heard rumblings, and I can't wait. I want it on Switch so bad. It's tr- well now that Tears has come out. Um, I think it's inevitable that those two Wii U ports are going to come one yeah. way or another over Twilight and 
Wind Waker. It's going to happen, Fingers of course. Fingers crossed. That would be amazing. Because I mean, we've got another seven years before the next Zelda. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and so this will be one of the HD remake releases or whatever. And I think that'll be great. That would be fantastic. I will celebrate that. So time. we are doing Music of Wind Waker. Yes. And one thing I'm kind of excited about, I've listened to feedback here in a second, is you've picked all the songs tonight. I have. I, so... I had class today. You got in this morning. <laughs> yeah. And you had a, you had like, you know, a good number of songs picked. And instead of you just sitting weirdly in my apartment for four <laughs> hours, I was like, do you want to come downtown with me? I'll go to class and you can kind of just, you know, be in downtown Chicago at yes. coffee shops and whatnot. Meander. Yeah. And I know you walked over by the river a bit. You found a couple cool places. You found a bubble tea place or boba tea place. I did find a boba tea place and I found a bakery and I ate cake. It was great. <laughs> it, was, it was a highlight for me. But as I was getting in touch with you after um, getting out of class and everything, I said, oh, you know, where you at? Or let's, let's, let's line up again so we can ride the blue line back out to uh, Wicker Park over here. And... You said it, I said, oh, you said, oh, I'm working or whatever. And you basically said, well, I'm actually just adding more songs to the list. <laughs> and so I am, I am coming into this so green. I yes. don't even know what songs are on this list for this episode. It. And I am so excited. I'm so stoked. I like, as I was putting this list together, I was like, just remembering how, uh, honestly, I mean, we can get more into this, like when we're in the pro- no, episode proper, but I think that the soundtrack is, yes, the nostalgia is a big part of why I love Wind Waker, but the more I'm listening to this sound, I think the soundtrack is a huge part of why I love Wind Waker so it's, much. It's it's phenomenal. It's I, I, it stands out for me too. It's a fantastic soundtrack, yeah. Deep cuts like Dragon Roost Island and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we'll get into it, I guess. Oh, is that a deep cut? You have some other things coming if you think that's a it deep cut. It gets deeper? Oh, I got it some. It cuts deeper? I got some deep cuts, <laughs> BB. <laughs> all right. Um, well, let me get to some listener feedback here first real quick, and then we'll dive in. Um, here is a review on Apple Podcasts by someone named, oh, is it Jan- Janite 1775? I'll just spell it over here. Yeah, maybe Janet, but with a, you know, little. Take off my old man glasses. J A N E I T E 1775 says, Yay, I found you. No, <laughs> honestly, so these are new reviews for me. Yeah, I haven't read new these. New listener. Um, Five star review over on Apple Podcasts, which is a great way to support the show. You know, we have Patreon, we have other, we have merch and stuff that people can be a part of and help us support the show. But honestly, if you just want to give us a hand and give us a review on Apple Podcasts, it helps the algorithm and helps yeah. more people find us and it helps us be a little bit higher up in the charts. So it's all, I'm always so grateful. So anyway, here we go. Yay, I found you. Just recently found your podcast and am loving it so far. I've been listening to the latest episodes and making my way through the backlog as well. Really fun and entertaining podcast with a ton of different Zelda content. That I am enjoying immensely. Keep up the good work. Three green heart emojis. Okay, bye. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, if they're um, if they're, if 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 uh, Janet seventeen seventy five, if you are going into the backlog and you want to find the Princess Zelda's episode, that's the most recent episode that Mallory and I recorded. Even though it was like two three years ago. <laughs> but it's um, in there. <laughs> but it's in there. Uh, that was a good one. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got something over on. I believe this is Instagram. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a this is a DM by someone. Who goes by, oh, Quinn Hardigan. Oh, Quinn Hardigan, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, great. Um, Quinn here says, hey, AZP, I found your podcast a couple of months ago and have listened to every episode two times or more Heck since yeah. then. We're six seasons in. I love that. Quinn, I, I love it too. Super listener. Oof, that's actually awesome. My brother, who recently moved down to Peru for the next two years, wow. used to listen to you guys and recommended the podcast before he left. Fascinating. Ever since finding your podcast, I've played Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Ocarina, Majora's, and most recently, Minish Cap. Wow. Uh, Probably all on the Switch. After never beating a Zelda game beforehand. Quinn, I am loving your journey right now. You guys are absolutely amazing, and your podcast has become an amazing piece of my life. Thank you so much. Three green heart emojis. More green heart emojis. I love that. Well, yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to you about this in a long time, but, like, that's kind of our unofficial, like, AZP love. Yeah. I've kind of let the community know. I love that. The green heart emoji is... Because it's like Link Love. <laughs> Indeed, exactly. That's it, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Have you been dipping into any of the Zelda games on the Switch at all, Mallory, as you sip your water? I know, yeah. Um, so I, I haven't bought Tears of the Kingdom yet. Um, so I You don't, can see yourself out. I know. No, of course I know, not. I know. Well, okay, here's the thing. I was on deadline for one of my books when it came out. Yeah. And so I told myself that I wasn't going to buy it until I had turned in that edit. Because it's a slippery slope otherwise. Exactly. Um, but then by the time I turned in that edit... 
Um, everyone was talking about Baldur's Gate, and so mm. I got Baldur's Gate three instead. <laughs> Fair enough. I, <laughs> and I'm I get so it. sorry, <laughs> but it's on my list. I'm gonna play Tears, but it's worth playing. But again, like the joke I made a few minutes ago, we know we're playing this game for the next seven years, yes. or five years, or whatever. But well, like, I was there's no rush. To, I was late to Breath as well. Like I didn't beat Breath until it had been out probably two years or so. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I'm just on target for my own schedule. Of gaming, I didn't even start Breath until about a year after it was out. Yeah. Right. Oh, interesting. Here's an old one. Uh, this is on YouTube for the Favorite Ways to Regain Hearts episode back in Season 2, Episode 7. This was Shane Kelly's first episode Ooh, yeah, yeah. on the show. Uh, Xenix the King here says, I may be five years late, but I'm loving this podcast. Oh, I love this. <laughs> hysterical. Um, second ever pod and definitely my favorite red heart emoji. Oh, red heart because it's kind of regain hearts. I think I like. Oh, I think that lines up. It does line up. That's cute. Oh man, Xenix the King. Yeah, you are welcome. That's the, we we designed this show so people can listen to the old episodes. That's, That's the say, whole point. Never five years too late. It's timeless. Timeless. <laughs> Love it. Okay, we have one more and then we'll get into this. Um, Jordan Stoltz over on Patreon sent us a message um, and said, uh, "This is oh oh I think this is the." I don't have the full screenshot here, but it's over on Patreon. And I think it's a comment on our episode that I did with Kevin Goodwin about growing up with the Zelda series. Okay, Kevin yeah. and I have a very unique experience. We're pretty close to the same age, and we both kind of organically, basically after the Super Nintendo, organically experienced all the Zelda games in order. <clears throat> so I think this is a comment to that. Enjoyed the comments about gaming with your kids, because, of course, Kevin has a couple kids, and or at least, I'm sorry, at least a son. Um 30, 32, I think, year old dad here with two year old and four month old sons. I absolutely cannot wait for them to reach the age where they can play Ocarina of Time. Part of me feels like it's an essential gaming experience, and I've joked with my wife about making them finish Ocarina of Time before they can have whatever the gaming system of the day is. <laughs> Only partially kidding. Uh, really enjoy this show. Became a patron yesterday. Well, thank you so much, Jordan. And actually, I recognize the name. Um, Since I've been pretty much listening to every episode now, and if that's not worth a few bucks, then I don't know what is. Cheers. Jordan, thank you. If you're watching us right now on the video, thank you so much. It's not, the camera's not, it's not falling forward, is it? I don't think so. It looks like it's a little, looks like we're a little higher in the frame now than we were uh, earlier. I'll check it on the break. If it's all together, then you guys know. (laughs) We're we're directly speaking to the Magical Sword people on our our standard episode. (laughs) Wonderful. Very good. Well, Jordan, thank you so much. Uh, I love it. Um, you experienced Ocarina of Time a little bit out of order as well, didn't you, Mallory? Didn't you like play it on the Wii U or something? Um, no, I played it on. Was it the 3DS one? I d- I have played the 3DS one, but that wasn't my first experience. I think we had an emulator on the Wii or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, downloadable yeah. on the Wii. <clears throat> so um, that was when I first played it because yeah, I, I, my first game system that I ever owned was a GameCube. So. Um, I missed it. Fascinating. There. <laughs> it was technically available, but you had to have one of those really weird little promotional discs to play. Oh, it. okay. Yeah. I mm-hmm. didn't even know about that at the time. So, um, but yeah, no, I played it for the first time in probably like 2014, 2015. What was yeah. uh, the experience like for you, Ocarina? Because I'm kind of going through this with Katie right now. Yeah. We're going to do an Ocarina of Time episode uh, in the beginning of season seven. And she really wants to play the 3DS version. Yeah. And I really want her to play the original version. But <laughs> the 3DS version is is the same code. It's just a graphic overlay on the code that I'm like, all right, relax, David. Mm-hmm. Let Katie experience how she wants to. There's a little part of me that wants her to experience those choppy, blocky well, that's graphics. I say that I had a lot of trouble. I got used to it, right? And then I played Majora's right after I played Ocarina. So, like, I went, right, you know what I mean? So well, you like, almost have, like, a mental filter of these are just the graphics? Yes, but I had to, like, get that filter in and actually, like, to, you know, bring it to, to Wind Waker 2 a little bit. I think that's one of the reasons why Wind Waker to me is, like, a little bit more timeless, even though it's older. To me, it feels newer than Twilight Princess does because the tune style kind of masks a lot of those like older graphic challenges it for me. It makes it ageless, yeah. Uh, exactly. It makes it a little easier to palette. But yeah, if you're used to, uh, if you are used to Breath of the Wild style graphics or even Twilight Princess style graphics, because I'd played Twilight Princess before I played um, Ocarina, it took me a long time to be okay with those blocky graphics. I'm not going to lie to you. Fascinating. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, where, were, where <laughs> this doesn't really matter. I just can't help but ask. Where in the game were you when you felt like maybe you stopped noticing them, the older <sighs> graphics? Because, I mean, even when Ocarina came out, 
it had it was a very weird situation. I remember playing Ocarina and thinking, oh, the, like it had a new lighting engine that we had not seen on Nintendo sixty four games at the time. The fact that there was like directional lighting was a big deal. Yeah, that he'd have that the Navi when she'd fly around, like the lights would move around Link as a character. That was all very new, but the models were a bit rudimentary even for the time. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the bottom of the well, uh, uh, roughly wow. thereabouts in so the game. Like, like more than halfway through. I know. I know. I told you I was muscling. And I, but it's a good thing though because then at that point was when I was like, okay, now I want to play Majora's because before that, I was like, I'm <laughs> I'll beat Ocarina so that I can Sam a real Zelda fan, right? Oh my gosh. But at that point, like maybe I'm just no no more old games for me, but then I like got used to it. I was okay with it and then I was able to go through and I, and I loved Majora's. So Going straight into great. Majora, was it like no no harm? No, it was just... great. And I actually this is this will get me kicked out again. I like Majora's better than Ocarina, personally. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. No, it's totally okay. Some so, people do. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed, uh, like, all of Majora's because it was weird and dark and we, creepy in I the feel best it, ways. I feel like we've talked about this on the show. <laughs> Ocarina is a staple in gaming, and it's a it's a brilliant, you know, piece of gaming. Yeah. But um, some of the highs, there are higher highs in Majora's Mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, For there sure. was, they're kind of letting them go unleashed and get, you know, there's some lower lows in Majora's Mask, too. But there's, like, I think it's it's an, it's an a good follow-up. Ooh, a little bit of the Tears of the Kingdom of the Breath of the Wild thing. Ooh, Like, okay, we're not yeah. literally in the same land, but it's the same engine. No, but it's, yeah, it's and then the you let, same, it's a continuation. A little bit, and then you let mm-hmm. the designers go a little, get a little looser with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, and kind of do their own thing. My favorite tidbit that most people know about Majora's Mask is that originally they wanted it to be seven days and they were planning for a whole week basically you'd relive a week over and over and over yeah but there wasn't enough memory in the game for all of that <laughs> and they had to put it down to three and I do think I think seven would have been really cool oh, oh I was just gonna say I'm glad it was only three can you freaking imagine <laughs> doing a well you just got emotional uh, well, I'm sorry I work a day job I work live the same week over and over again in real life I don't want to do that Wow. In my gaming experience. Wow, it's, this is getting deep. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you just dropped a fictional mic. Very I good. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So let's let's. So we're going back to we're going to Wind Waker. Yes. And uh, I mean, this is I'm I'm in love with this situation right now because I don't even have notes in front of me. I love. I this don't for know you. what we're going to talk about next. <laughs> what if I just like went totally rogue? I won't do that. <laughs> and what start, what would rogue be that's a great question start playing i don't know just play some baller gate music <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> exactly I, I you know what now i'm gonna I'd be like oh interesting it. i don't really remember I don't this remember one. this uh this scene what i do remember is what maybe i can speak to this to set it up because i imagine i i could guess what your first song might be if you're slightly going in game order i remember the title screen coming up and having this beautiful like it was uh, with as it with wind waker being a gamecube game we were hearing Yes, some of it's MIDI, you know, but like essentially real instruments, what feels like real instruments compared to the Nintendo 64 music. Yes. And real music happened right off the bat. And I'm going to hand it over to you because I feel like that might be where we're starting. Interesting. You mentioned the title theme. <gasps> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Like, doesn't this just take you back? Like that little. Yeah. And it feels very nautical right off the right off the jump. By design, I think. Yeah, well, for sure. Well, right? we're kind of going over the ocean. Doesn't the camera come up or something? Or yeah, well, it things? comes it comes up from uh, up showing outside island and like pans around it. That's right. It? That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah, you just hear this like cheerful. I think one of the things I like. Okay, well, also too, I guess like slight spoiler for the rest of the songs I picked. I haven't picked like any of the boss themes or anything, okay. even though I Mostly know a lot of yeah, just because it's so cheerful and like just evoc it just makes me happy it makes my soul happy and this is a favorites episode so i picked my favorites so i love it <laughs> this is fascinating fascinating me because when katie and i did our music of breath of the wild episode she kind of picked similar things too it was a lot of the environmental music yeah so much so that we were like oh maybe we got to do a follow-up and do like the boss levels right. and the whatever you know what i mean yeah. This is great. Oh, was that a natural fade out right there? That was a uh, natural fade out right, of the sure. clip I found. Yes. So there cool. you go. Um, so what else What else can we say about this song? Obviously, it really sets the tone, certainly sets the theme. Um, I have no idea if that was real instruments or MIDI. Um, and maybe it was like three or four instruments. We had a little drum in the yeah, background. Yeah, the little drum, the little the strum, strum, and then the mm-hmm. little flute that mm-hmm. does the little kind of vaguely piratey theme. Yeah. Um, which is very nice. Um, so then the next song that I've picked here, speaking of the very beginning of the game, this was actually the last one I added. I <gasps> forgot to add this one. And then I was like, I can't not have this one. Yep. Yeah. So this there is the outside Island theme, um, which 
There it is. Oh my gosh. Doesn't Such... this just make you think of chasing those little pigs around that island? Well, and... a little bit, but for me, it feels like uh, Kakariko, not Kakariko, a uh, Kokiri Forest from Ocarina of Time. Oh, like, this is yeah. like exactly the same tone. The instrumentation is different. It might, the melodies are even pretty similar, if yeah. not exactly the same. But, but it's kind of like the home base the theme. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And even that whole, like, da 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 in the beginning. Yeah. I know it does not make me think of the pigs. I'm so sorry. I don't know if I did much with the pigs. <laughs> if you catch the pigs, um, so you have to kind of like army crawl on your forearms to catch them. And it's super cute because it's like, shh, 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 shh. and then you pick them up and then they go and they squeal and you like run and you hold them over your head and then you throw them into this lady's yard. And she gives you like, I think like a red rupee or like a purple rupee. I mean, she gives you like a good amount of money for very early because that's like right at the jump. Interesting. If you catch, because she's like, oh, my babies, you found them. Like she, her pigs escaped and you're like rescuing them. A little, a new play on the, mm -hmm. on the cuckoo. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. So that's all. Cool. I feel babies. like I picked a pig up. I don't know if I really realized that I could do that. Or maybe I didn't. I can't remember. But Yeah. So there you go. And then also, then the whole you know, the camera goes up to where Link is. Link is Link wakes up, which yes. is very important in a Zelda game. His little sister wakes him up this time. No, that's kind of cool. Instead of Navi waking right. him up, and he's in his like little uh, what, like a lookout station, I guess, like over the over the the you know water looking out. And then she's like, "Do you remember what day it is, brother?" And it's just going. Is like, <laughs> what is this? Is it his audience. birthday? Or is it the day he becomes the hero? Or it's, it's his, his birthday? birthday, but it's. Yeah. It's not, it's both kind of. So it's the day, it's his birthday on the year he turns the same age as the hero from Legend. Got it. So it's both. Yeah. Very serendipitous. It is, right? And then that's why he has to wear that little outfit because it's ceremonial. For and the I love that he like doesn't it. like it at first. Yeah. Like, he's what? like, what the heck? It's all scratchy. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just beautiful. For me that, yeah. I, oh man, I'd love to do a side by side with the Kakiri Forest theme because it feels almost the same to me. But anyway, I, th yeah. I think it's probably supposed to be. Right. Probably. Right. It's supposed to be that like touchstone, right? for the beginning of the Zelda game and like yeah. bring back that like nostalgic vibe I bet. I don't have these notes in front of me, but I think that Wind Waker and Twilight Princess still had Koji Kondo as the main um, you know, orchestration and yeah. the, the main composer. It wasn't until Skyward Sword when they had like five people. Gotcha, bunch of stuff. yeah. Well, because they had actual like like full orchestral arrangements yep. for Skyward. I know that. Mm -hmm. But so maybe Koji's doing his uh yeah. You know, he's kind of pulling Kakiri like Forest anyway. A little homage to to himself, maybe. Uh-huh. And I love that. All right, the third song I've picked. This is, I literally would just watch this little cutscene over and over again to listen to this song. Oh my gosh, what, where are we going? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You'll know it from immediately. Is this, is this them showing up? No. What the heck? Is this the story? Mm-hmm. Yep, it's where it's they the walk story. through the legendary story and they like show like it's like, you know, almost like a oh. painting. You know what I mean? Where they show, and then the hero came, but then, you know, the and then the darkness came and the hero was nowhere to be found or whatever. You right. know what I mean? But what yeah. I'm hearing right now is we, you know, we're still, we have some woodwinds in there, but it's clearly more mid, like mid, mid European kind of, you know, mm -hmm. castles kind of feel here. Yes. We have harpsichord in there I'm hearing right now, which is very of that time. And it's like a little more minor chord because it's because again this is like a tragic story in this yeah. right is that it's like then the hero didn't save us you know what there's i mean a, yeah and there's a little bit of a flute in there still <gasps> oh oh my gosh this is great it's so good you see why i would just listen to yes. this over and over again <laughs> like literally like we're talking like i would just like have this up on the gamecube and like oh would just God. like sit even i played this game you know because okay i had like three games total for the gamecube when i played Wind Waker because sure. that was all I had and <laughs> so I played Wind Waker like a thousand times I would watch this cutscene all the way through every single time never skip it never just keep my thumb away from that A button I ain't skipping this <laughs> so this is this is a this is the classic Zelda theme uh -huh. did you know it at the time oh you I just thought nothing. this is the cool I part of the song I just thought it was or? cool yeah uh huh See, I was just destined to always be a Zelda fan and hearing it as a fiddle hearing it as a fiddle instead of uh the horns and stuff is really cool. Right? It makes it feel like a story being told, huh? Yeah, exactly. And it keeps it slightly nautical. Mm -hmm. Where does it go? It goes Ooh. sad. This is the part where the hero didn't return. <gasps> castles. <laughs> so many castle vibes. Right. Which is kind of your wheelhouse anyway. 
Absolutely. Aren't you? Did you start writing a sci-fi book, or can we not say that? Oh yeah, I have a sci-fi. It's with my agent right now. It's oh, okay. written. Cool. It's written. I'm very excited <laughs> to see what Ma- a Mallory Coon sci-fi book is like. I know, right? It was very fun to write. It was right. so fun to write. But yeah. This hero's falling. Okay. I mean, this is so great. I don't want to skip it. I know. There's enough going on here. Yeah, this is MIDI. This is definitely MIDI instruments, but it's, it's really good MIDI. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. What? I know. I wish I could watch this. I need to watch this cutscene again. I should have watched it again in prep because I don't remember exactly all the cues anymore. Is this part but of this it still? Is, oh, this, yeah. This is where we're coming so back. So this is, okay, yeah, this is coming back because this is like the, but we never forgot about the hero. We tell his story every year on the boy, when the boys on this island turn this age. This is why they wear this silly green outfit. Yeah, but this, we're back in the normal mm-hmm. world, which is why the instrumentation has changed. Yep, yeah, and we're talking now because this is the story that like Link gets, I think, before the... he puts his little outfit on. Uh... Yeah. And this is like the nautical flutes. We're back in our like mm-hmm. other universe. I love that they evoke. Yeah. Uh, not classic Zelda, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's kind of like the marrying of it, right? I feel like mm-hmm. this this does a good job of like setting the tone for this game where it's like, yeah, it's Zelda, but it's going to be a little cool. different. I remember being excited for, for Wind Waker. You know, I was skeptical of the art style, loved the music. Once I started playing it, even by the time I even got to the first quote unquote dungeon, I was kind of like, I mean, come on, this is Zelda. This is great. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, I feel like a lot of people were excited. Here's the thing. I don't have any of the like bad taste in my mouth from the people that like, uh, saw the like, I don't know if it was an official trailer or just leaked artwork. It or was something a space for... world like demo reel. Okay, yeah, that of, got released, of Twilight, and it set expectations. It wasn't right. officially Twilight, but it ended up being that. It art ended style. up being from that, yeah. And then Wind Waker came out, and people were like, "What is this garbage?" Um, so I never Whoa. had any of that. Mm. Yeah, well, that's you know a lot of people felt that way because you didn't like the tune style. I see. Um, I love the tune style, but that's just me. How do you feel about the tune style um, continuing on, like in the handheld games? Have you played many of them, or have you been inclined to play them because of the tune style, or is it more just a Wind Waker thing for you? Honestly, it's more just a Wind Waker. The only handheld I've ever played is um, Link's Awakening. Oh, the, the new one, which is before. Oh, oh, even the remake version, mm-hmm. which is great. That's yeah. cool. I see. Which was so fun. It was so no, cute. No Minish Cap yet or anything. No, no, yeah, I haven't touched any of those. Not like on purpose. Not yeah. like I'm avoiding them. I just like I don't play a lot of handheld. I've been. Right. I have always been like a console, and now I'm like console on PC, mm-hmm. um, kind of gamer. But like I'm not. I've heard Minish Cap is great. I've heard like the Oracle games are really great. Um, yeah. But I just, yeah. Haven't checked them out yet. We're playing through Oracle of Seasons behind the scenes right now to do a seasons oh, yeah? episode eventually. Yeah. Nice. Anyways, um, I think we can do like let's do what are we like four or five songs in right now? We are three songs in right let's now. Let's do one more, then go to break, and then okay. we'll we'll push through. I'm guessing there's like six more after this or something. Ish. Sure. Some of them are short. More? Some of them are short. There's more. Look at your face. There's more. I'm into it. <laughs> there's so many songs. They're so good. All right, okay. let's do it. Well, this one, a lot of them are repetitive. Like that one had like more of a, we had to listen to the whole thing. A lot of these, we can get the, the sure. vibes of it in a couple seconds. Um, but okay, this one, you'll know exactly where this one is in the Let game as soon as it starts. Let me see if I can get starts. the vibes. Immediately. No, this one doesn't do anything for me. What is this? Is this in one of the stores? No, it's the pirate ship. This is the pirate ship? Yep. So like when you're um, walking around talking to the pirates, or like actually I think it's when you're underneath trying to do the, oh, the little the jumpy in. game yeah, this with makes uh, sense. what's his name to yeah. get your uh, spoils back, all that good stuff. Well, this music makes sense for that then. Maybe you didn't hear this music as much as I did because you were better at that little jumpy I game. I doubt it. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I was really bad at that jumpy game. I failed it so many times, even before because you play it twice it gets harder oh, the gosh, second that's time right. that's yeah right. and even before so like even when you have the platforms i was falling then and then when you have to jump straight from because the second time you play it, you're jumping straight from like swinging uh torch to swing yes. torch <sighs> although i guess there wasn't a timer then so actually i think i was better the second time because you could just really you could just up. really take your sweet time maybe there was still a timer though but it just wasn't like quite as like visceral because you couldn't hear it clicking and the platform is going to go down or something i don't remember exactly. oh yeah this is coming back to me oh, now yeah 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 that was like the last time so i played stressful. wind waker was wind waker <laughs> hd for our wind waker review episode back in okay. like season two so it has been about two or three years now yeah um i still haven't played the, the hd remake i want to because it's nice. just what they did to um change the triforce shards piece of the puzzle <laughs> i like it a lot i like the remake because yeah that well, that's hopefully I'll get to play it on Switch soon. <gasps> mm, mm, 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. So that. Yeah. That one didn't trigger as many memories for me. But thank you for sharing that. <laughs> you were like this one. This ready. One, you'll get it. And you were like, no. Well, and then also like Tetra is the best, and that's Tetra's you know, super cool. She's super cool. Until the real main Tetra memories for me is when Link like sneaks in later on um, not outside island. Oh but, yeah, um, and she does that. Wink. Yeah. Uh huh. That's on Windfall like Island. Knows. Windfall. Um, there it is. Or when she puts him in the cannon to shoot him. <laughs> That was that's such an interesting it's moment so because the logic of the game uses cartoon logic to get him into a thing. So that's a situation where the game doesn't just look like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. They're using cartoon logic. Yeah, let's throw him in a cannon, right? shoot him out, just and he's gonna shoot splat against there. a wall. And that's And he'll be fine though. And that's part of the story. Yeah. So I actually remember that moment very well because I was like, Oh, we're not just looking like cartoons. We're oh yeah, doing we're cartoon. we're acting like cartoons. Yeah. yeah. But again, to me in the best way. I think we can squeeze in one more before yeah, let's break because it. it's sure. very tied to the, the last one. you like, one. David, I added so many then, when I was I know, downtown. I really did. I'm into um, it. I'm, I love it. But here's the thing is that there's a very natural break in between oh. the next one and then the one that comes okay. after. Because um, this one, okay, this one you, uh, well, I'm going to stop saying you'll know him. <laughs> maybe you won't. Maybe maybe I'm just unholy obsessed with this game. I, was, I participated <laughs> in the uh, Zelda Dungeon music quiz in their marathon stream about yeah. a month ago. And I did terrible. Oh, no. Just horrible. I don't think I got a single one right. And so I love Zelda music, but I don't know how well I retain Zelda music. Yeah. You can recognize when it's Zelda music, but maybe not what song it is, right? Which is fair. Yeah. Which is fair. All right. This one. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping. Yeah. That. So I have a really be. good jazz version of this, which I think I shared with you a couple of years oh, ago. Yeah, you totally Do you did. remember that? I think we listened to it at that Christmas party. Maybe. <laughs> I think we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I used to actually be able to play this on the piano. Back before um, I got terrible at piano. Yeah, like back when I knew how to play. <laughs> um, um, I feel like maybe I saw a video of that or maybe you did it at the condo or something. But um, anyway, yeah, this is great. This is wonderful. This is always a lot of fun. Yeah. The the, the ocean, the first couple times you go out on the ocean, it is so exciting. It is. It gets a little, I, I do get that it gets a little bit of drudgery after a while. And uh, that is one of the main, like, hatred points of the game, right? Just people that are like, I don't want to just, like, no. go across the ocean. But, like... Strong words. I mean, well, people people do. Like, people really hate this game. You, Oof. I get so much ire for people because they know it's my favorite. Huh. <laughs> it's all the game. And every time I say that, people are like, why? I'm like, oh, You're anyway. like, get that toxicity out of here. Exactly. We like to like things in this house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I think that uh, it's... It gets easier because you can do the teleport thing once you run into the second wind god guy. As long as you have the bow and arrow and you yeah. shoot him. I mean, I guess that is a little late in the game, right? So you've trekked across the ocean quite a bit at that point. Um, and then when you're looking for, like, the shards and stuff, you still have to do quite a bit of trekking just to find those glows. Like, I get it that a lot of people hate it. But to be fair, this song makes it much more enjoyable to yeah. just go across the ocean. We have some strings kicking in now. Yeah. And I don't know, but with MIDI music, you can have the music be dynamic, like it is in Twilight Princess. But um, it makes me wonder, if we're hearing we're hearing a rendition of this, I wonder if they're timing it for the strings to come in or if they're getting cued. I do remember oh. the first time I was on the ocean and it seamlessly transitioned from the little cartoon waves to like a rolling ocean. Oh, yeah. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. It's so cool. It well, or like, like epic. I don't have the song on here because, again, I only picked like the fun, happy ones, but um, <laughs> mostly, mostly. Um, but when like the sharks show up, or sure. like it starts raining or whatever, and then the vibe changes, and then the music gets sad and angry. I always hated that. And like when I was a kid playing this game yeah. for the first time, um, those sharks when they come back and they hit your boat and they knock you out if you don't jump over them. Okay. Yeah, and then Link is like swimming in the ocean, and there's sharks. sharks in the ocean. I would get so stressed out, and then like I learned how to jump, and I was like, oh, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> but like I love for it. a while, like anytime they like music would change to that like scarier rendition of the ocean theme i would just yeah. um mm-mm. i would just stop playing i would save and quit for a while because <laughs> i didn't want to face the sharks i i uh yeah yeah it was it's like a oh, oh all the things sorry oh. my phone's just exploded i'm so unprofessional You're too popular yeah so rude Oh, but. did you hear how blasé I was with the yeah? I was like, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. that's not what I meant. Yeah, but, um, so popular. Well, maybe do. this is a moment for us to take our break. I think so. Yeah? I love it. Thank you for sharing this. There was a lot of instrumentation going on there. That was actually maybe the first time that we started hearing strings proper. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of flutes before that, keeping things small because it's the first time we're hitting the ocean. Right? It's the Or like plucked strings early. But yeah, that's like yeah, when you right. first hit the ocean, like 
that's I, the first time you hear that ocean theme is when you're sailing with the king of red lions for the first time yeah so it's like you're sailing under your own power now right or technically the king of red lions power but uh you're not, right, you're on, not tetris on the tetris ship, ship anymore right like you are just one with the ocean right like that's kind of the vibe it's the hyrule field moment mm -hmm. right that's that this is that game's like now we're actually yes. there's a, every my favorite part about every zelda game is that moment when you're like oh this is the part where it gets big, or this is the yeah. part where I can kind of do whatever no, I want. I have some I'm agency. truly on my adventure. I can kind of pick some stuff out, and that is exactly like, uh, yeah, when that, I think it's even after Windfall Island, mm -hmm. because you, you have to get the sale first. Right. So it's like literally like when the game opens up for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. So cool. All right, well, I'll see you in, you know, one ad break here, <laughs> and we'll keep going. I can't wait to see what else we have in store. Right? Ooh. Any major takeaways so far with the music? The MIDI doesn't bother me at all. I'm no, loving the instrumentation. Not I think at it's all. very thematic. I think all the um there aren't any wild cards here. They're all kind of lining up in ways that support the story and support what's happening in the environment. Yes, we're gonna get some wild cards in the second half. Okay, interesting. Um but I I, I agree that it supports the story and we can talk about it when we get there and um, i'm also fine with this but not a tremendous amount of instrumentation like there's not like you know 30 different instruments no happening yeah it's very like simple it's very well it's kind of like the tune style right it's keeping yeah. things simple and keeping things like uh actually that's a good point like childlike wonder i feel like is in a lot of it um mm -hmm. which is part of why i love it so. and also ocarina of time had a lot of like weird sound effect music where you'd be like ooh, 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 ah. Oh yeah, <laughs> stuff and like. This can you is do, like, Can we just have you do that for the whole episode? Yeah, no problem. That'd be the new. That'd be you'll the new just, intro. You'll just scat every one of the songs. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. I'm not even gonna make a joke and try it. We're gonna go to break and we'll come back to, to explore more music of Wind Waker. Oh, I love it. <laughs> It's the first day of school, and I'm walking around downtown Chicago with hundreds of other students. Everyone's getting back from summer break, and you can tell that they're happy to see each other after a couple months. For me, however, it's been a little longer. Hi, I'm David, and I want to introduce you to Returning Student, a documentary podcast that I've been making about my return to a college that I left 20 years ago. I'm back in the same city, at the same school, the same student ID number. Everything else feels completely different. My fellow classmates are literally half my age. My professors work in my industry. Sometimes I wonder why I've come back at all. But then I get the opportunity to sit down with one of my professors and have a conversation with them, which uh, usually yields a little bit of wisdom. You can find the show on all major podcast providers, as well as our website, returningstudentpodcast.com. A lot has changed over the past two decades. And we are back from the break. Mallory, what, what do you have in store? So much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a kid in a candy store this episode. I you love have this. A, you have a little bit of a glimmer in your eye. We've been hanging out all day, but like there's something happening this right is... now. <laughs> I'm coming alive talking about the music of Wind Waker. Yeah, well, this next song is extra fun because um, literally we could listen to it if you just called me right now. This song has been is my ringtone? ringtone since the days when it was cool to buy ringtones on iTunes. I don't know, like 2011. Like this, this song has been my ringtone forever. So without further ado. No, wait, I'm calling. You. Oh, you're going to call me? Okay, I got to actually turn my volume on. happening oh my gosh you really have that as your ringtone 100 percent. have for years all right i'm hanging up love it <laughs> that's for anyone who calls huh anyone who calls that's amazing yep i did do the i did have the like the bling 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 as my like uh you know text yeah, yeah, thing yeah, for a while but anyway tone. yeah yeah all right, here we go but so yeah there you go uh dragon let's Roos do Island dragon theme. roost that's everybody it. loves dragon roost i love this theme it's so like cheerful and like, what is the energy I'm getting here? It's very... Well, there's a bit of Gerudo happening. Yes. There's like the cast, you know, the Castanetas or whatever they're actually mm -hmm. called. I'm not saying the right thing. No, but the... the yeah, claws. That, yeah, yeah, the little That, that little sound, yeah. Oh we can gosh. tell we're using the... <laughs> you know a lot about music. Here. Um, castanets, maybe, perhaps. Yes, but something. I think that sounds right. But yeah. th that little clicky-click-click was in the Gerudo mm -hmm. stuff. And what's the lore behind... Oh, I know what the lore is. It's reverse lore, where... 
Dorito <laughs> Village in Breath of the Wild is this island, is yes. this volcano or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine. Yep. Yep. So yeah, this is obviously when you first meet the Rito that aren't just the mailman. Um, yeah, and you're kind of wandering around. And this was like, to me, this is like the first island you can explore uh, on your own, right? So yeah. when you, at least, I mean, I guess maybe you could do it in another order, but I don't, I don't think can. so. It's really uh, I think because you need, um, this is where you get the grappling hook, right? It's kind of the you need the grappling hook to get to the forest haven and the rest of the stuff. Um, so yeah, 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 this is like kind of your first like place that you show up to on your own. You discover the bomb flowers here. I think. I don't think you have the bomb flowers at all on Forsaken Fortress, yeah? No. Um, no, not at all. Yeah. And so, I, I remember Forsaken Fortress happens, but it felt like a pre, it felt like a Deku Tree dungeon, like a pre dungeon. Yes, and honestly, I hate Forsaken Fortress to this day. Oh, I hate um, it. I know. I'm sorry. I no, I'm keeping it because the reason why I hate it is sure. because it makes me you have anxious. The right. <laughs> sure. Because I don't like any uh, video game mechanic where I lose my weapons. I mm. get very uncomfortable with that. When the game takes them away. When the game takes my weapons away, and now I'm like, because I'm a very, I'm a very hack and slash style gamer. I see. I'm not a big stealth girl. Yep. Um, I'm very much a like, <laughs> I'll just die fifty times trying to kill this <laughs> knot again. of Go enemies, again. right? Because whatever. Um, How'd you do on Eventide Island in Breath? Did that frustrate you, or you're like David? I haven't even tried it. I, I, I don't remember it. It's by the name. island way off on the side where once you land on it, they take literally everything oh, away. Oh my gosh. I did try it. Uh, I didn't. Didn't complete didn't it. Copy. Complete no it. problem. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I abandoned ship on that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Pretty quickly. How did um, you feel about being captured by the Gerudo in Ocarina of Time? Because they do the same thing there. I didn't like that. I didn't like, in, uh, I didn't like in Skyward when uh, you get captured, uh, when you go back to the Fire Mountain the yep. second time. Yep. I, it's just like, I don't sure. like that mechanic. Yeah. I understand the purpose of it because then it's it's the reason why I don't like it is why it's a good mechanic, right? Is because it forces me out of my gaming comfort zone. Right, right. Um, but yeah, well, especially like I think too, since I have so many like childhood memories of playing Wind Waker when I was really young, I legitimately was scared on the Forsaken Fortress. Um, the thing that scares me the most and still does is it the spotlights? Is no, it's a song. It makes no, it's oh. not. Well, there probably is a song for it. Well, there's a sound. Well, you had, for you put it. your finger <gasps> over the. Uh, you oh, put I know. Well, my computer you were, like, was uh, seamlessly transitioning. Right. Oh, that would have been really smart, like, but no, I didn't she do that. Needs to be a radio, radio um, DJ. <laughs> right? now, next yeah. time. Um, but yeah, no, the mini blends. Oh, this is like. Me, 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 yeah. Me, me. Oh yeah. my gosh. They're creepy. They're creepy, and uh, it's like defeat by a thousand cuts. Uh, to <laughs> to yeah. Because that's the thing. Like I, the first time I ran into them was when I was on Forsaken Fortress the first time, and I didn't have my any any sword, nothing to defend myself, and they they like just ran me down, and then oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming and scary, and I didn't like it. Um, and so like I literally anytime I hear that, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like um. Oh my gosh! Well, you'll know this. What are the little dinosaurs in Jurassic? Oh, the Park? compies! I one hundred percent about Peter yes. Stormare's uh, death scene in Lost World. Mm-hmm. The compies, yes. That is like literally what those feel like to me, uh, and I I don't like them. So yeah, I, yeah, that's, yeah. That's kind of nuts because I was gonna make that reference, but I didn't see. Know it. But it's that's exactly what it is, though. It's because yeah. it's accurate, and maybe that's what they were going for it's with the those little mini blends. micro hive or whatever. Um, it's like micro things as a hive. Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yep. Um, one thing that also I liked about the Dragon Roost Island music. Is that it? Um, it's also, even though it's it's Gerudo feeling, um, it's it's we're very much different now at this point. So we've traveled yeah. across the ocean, we've got our strings, and we've got gone, gone to a new land, and it feels like it. Yes, it feels very well. And that's I think why I was like, oh, well, this is actually going to be a great place for us to kind of transition after after the ocean theme because it's like. We do now, uh, you had mentioned that like all of those songs do have like kind of very similar, it's very nautical themed and it's, you know, all of them kind of have this like similar energy to an extent. Um, And I think that at this point when a lot of the songs that we're getting into have very different vibes, radically different from one from one another. Um, And that's why, right? It's because it it is supposed to feel like somewhere entirely new and different because it is somewhere Link's never been and it's an environment like nothing Link's ever seen. Yeah. Um, And like, especially like learning all those mechanics, like we're talking like Wind Waker, Dragon Rose Island. That's the first time I saw bomb flowers, right? Like that's the first time that (sighs) mechanic was introduced to me as a gamer, right? Like, Mm. so I think like all of those like kind of like, or the bottle. The bottle sure. is relevant. You have to collect water to use it for something. I yeah. forget what exactly. I think you exactly. make a plant grow or oh, something. Oh, you do. You make a bomb flower grow with it. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, that was the first time I 
discovered the value of the empty bottle in Zelda, right? Because this is like, all because that ocarina is later for you. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So like to me, this was the introduction of a lot of those like really staple Zelda mechanics. It speaks to how a good Zelda game, and in this way, Wind Waker is being a great example of this, can repeat the, the the mechanics and even when and how they introduce them so that new players feels like it's so that new. I remember I can't remember the bottle yeah. moment. I remember being like, oh, OK, like an ocarina. But like and it was special. But for you, it was the new thing. Right. And I was it like, still works. oh, I pick this flower and I can go through. Oh, but if I hold it too long, I blow up. OK, interesting. You know what I mean? Like, so that this discovery was... moment still happens for a new player. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot to make a game that can do and that. Like a whole new game. Yeah. 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 So mm. that's it's always special for me because I remember getting a lot of those. Yeah, I love it. Kind of mechanics for the first time. So where are we going next? Where? Is it Deku Tree? I was going to say, where did else? we go next in the game? <gasps> Just inside. Cup Forest Haven. Yeah. So this is like when wow. you get to that island and you get inside, like you have to go up the, like that's where you need the grappling hook, right? Because you got to grapple up to get into the, uh, the or up to the top of that like little waterfall thing. Yeah. Uh, um, this was the first time you ever see those. Uh, what are they called? The choppy flowers. Oh, Deku's? Is that what? De are they oh, Deku? Deku. Well, they are. They are. We've learned this in our Deku episode, but they're called Deku. Um, oh, Deku Babas or something. Deku Babas. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yep. Uh, they are technically part of the Deku species, yeah, and it has to like do with where people. where the seeds are planted and what kind of ground oh. makes them good Deku or bad or Deku. Or bad Deku. So less than I figured. Well, that, that was one my out. first introduction to bad Deku. Sure. Um, was in this part, but yeah, so this is like once you get in, and like. I can just like I can picture it in my mind too because then there's like all the like little kind of it's like soft lighting and it's all very green and there's like little firefly lights around and yeah a lot of environmental physics so things floating much around so yeah and then you get in there and uh, the big Deku tree has got all those choo choos popping out of his face like zits remember that I mean it creeped me out and at first oh for sure because it's like oh, what what is happening and then you got to roll into it and take off um, but this is also the introduction for me to one of my absolute favorite. Uh, little species in all of Zelda, which is the Koroks. Okay, of course. Them. I love them. I just think they're so cute. I want one as like my, uh, uh, not a pet, right? Because they're like a fully like sentient species. My neighbor, my roommate, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine just going down the hall to like your and apartment like, door and they, hey, me, me. <laughs> or like, uh, like when, when you take Makar with you on that one mission in yeah. the temple and he like follows you and he just kind of goes like, chicka, chicka, chicka. <laughs> oh, that's right, the walking noise. Along. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's the most adorable <laughs> thing in my life. Um, and I love them. So, All right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. I remember um, being a little underwhelmed. I loved this area. And then I realized, I was like, wait, we're just in a big dome, but it's okay. Because how else are they going to make it feel like a closed-in forest? Yes. And, but, but it's a very magical-looking space. Yeah, well, and it also uh, introduces one of my um, favorite mechanics in Wind Waker, which is the... Um, is it the flower shooting thing? Well, I do love that, but it's, well, I guess <laughs> it's that and uh, with the, the leaf that I you appreciate hold. the yes and there, man. Yeah, Thank but, you. <laughs> it was, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But honestly, because you use those two mechanics together a lot. Where you'll climb in the flower and it eats you and then it shoots you up and then you pull the leaf out and yeah. wee. First time in any Zelda game you're doing that. Yeah, so cool. That and then I love how um, kind of surprisingly versatile this little leaf is though. Because yes, you use it as like your little sailcloth, right? From, mm -hmm. from Skyward or whatever. But you can also use it to move things or propel yourself along by just, you know, throw or like whatever. What is this motion I'm doing right now? Swinging it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fanning. <laughs> Fanning. Swinging. Yeah. Um, or you can, um, like those little helicopter guys. Yes. You can fan them and, and then oh, right, right, right. they Move like, ah, and then there you can hit them with your sword and stuff. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool little mechanics that you get, uh, end up getting to do with, uh, with that little leaf. And I, I always really liked that. I, I remember piece. what stood out for me with the leaf was there. So uh, Breath of the Wild has an in system physics engine running all the time so physics just exists on all the items in breath of the wild but um in wind waker they were experimenting with physics systems but it wasn't quite in the engine it would be like tacked on for certain areas and all of that was physics engine stuff whenever it was leaf the leaf blowing oh, things okay, all that yeah. was calculated as real physics they weren't animations right and they would load that code like if there was a certain room later in the deku Tree. Uh, remember when you have to fly over to the other island and there's yeah. the wind going one way? They just load it up for that area, the physics engine, and then they let it happen. Nice. And so whenever you use the leaf, those are like proper physics most of the time running I in Wind Waker, that. which is kind of cool. 
And so very cool. And that's why you'll see the bridges sway a little bit if yeah. you use it. If you're using well, and you have to um, you know, change the direction of the wind and then use that to to fly. I yeah, I love it's cool stuff. That whole piece is very cool. Mm -hmm. Um so the next uh well let's let's go uh we'll take a little detour. Uh, um so this one is another kind of just <gasps> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's kind of environmental. Well, so, I mean this is Ocarina. Yeah. Um but it, it morphs into it, it's a shorter one, like I said, this this entire track is like This is Navi in the beginning of Ocarina. Is See, it? It's, it's gonna, this is where she, in Ocarina she turns is in a different key. This is where she turns to fly around oh, the, okay. the Kakiri forest. Interesting. Yeah, well, and this one is just, so it's, uh, if you're sailing through the night, when that's, the song is dawn. And so when dawn happens. Well, that's cool. And then it will go right into the ocean theme dun, from yeah, from yeah. this one. Um, That's awesome. It yeah. replaces the chicken uh, thing <laughs> yeah. that happens in Ocarina and the wolf howl. So then you know you're in daytime. And it's probably it's obviously a throwback, you know, yeah. to, to Navi. Oh my gosh, I don't even very recognize of it from that. But I mean, I'm obviously certain that you are correct. Well, I for me, the Ocarina was the one I played so much. Was the first much. one, yeah. And um, and lastly, it's kind of cool because night themes and day themes, even in Breath of the Wild and Tears and stuff, they put, they like to like sl slide in older, you know, things that. So like this was this definitely was in a different key. Even the tempo was like a little bit different and some of the harmonies were different. But it's the it's the music that plays when Navi goes to when she's done talking to the Deku tree. Yeah. Anyways. And she goes to try to like find. Yeah. Yeah. Find Link. So find that's a way Link. to like you were starting the day. It feels like yeah. a great sunrise kind of song. Oh my God. And it's like you starting the starting, starting the, starting the day, Zelda starting the experience yeah. with the, I love that as being a callback. I didn't even recognize that. Hmm. I don't remember the pirate ship, but I remember that. Right? <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> well, yeah. Between the two Dave, of us, we will this remember one. all of the You're things. gonna remember. You will remember Jumping this on the boxes. one though, actually. Wait, maybe. oh, this next one? Oh yeah, this next one. Um, so this is actually the only kind of dark song that I've chosen. Gross. Um yeah, this is <laughs> you're like disgusting. Um it's the second to last song that I've picked, too. Um, okay. And I will tell you why this one made the cut. Uh, well, I mean, you'll, it, it's also just a cool song, but, um, oh, 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 yeah, it's the, it's the Sages song from Ocarina. Yeah. Which makes sense. Is this sense. when we're down in the castle, seeing the stained glass? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why it makes a lot of sense that it's the Sages, which, but see. Oh, nautical. But no, and, this is different and music kind of medieval right because you're in the so this is like this melodies from Ocarina. when you're in so this is when you're in the castle and they're all the bad guys are in there and they're just frozen in time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're kind of walking through and it's kind of eerie it's creepy and you're like Ooh, this is a little weird and then you go down underneath and then um they all wake up while you're down there and this song plays while you're like you're still downstairs <gasps> but the camera cuts to upstairs and you see them all kind of shake the rust off and like start walking around and you're downstairs like oh no because you know to get back out you're like there's like 20 30 bad guys up there and they're i mean and they're like knuckles they're right. like the you know, they're big bats they're yeah. not like little choo-choos out there like they're big baddies out there um but the good news is then uh -huh. this is why this kind of creepy song makes the cut for me um <laughs> you just got your the I think you just got the master sword here, and <laughs> dude, oh, I you're just, stronger. I just mowed through all these. <laughs> guys. I mean, you feel very powerful. You're just defeating everything like pretty easily. This was also too. Um, I had just struggled through all the knuckles I had encountered thus far, mm -hmm. um, and this was when I discovered the like wait for the A button to do the flashy, and then you just oh. go around and cut the armor off. Yeah. Um. So I mean, which I am certain most people figured out long before this part of the game but I had just been like struggle busting through every knuckle before this I see. Um, and I figured that mechanic out when I played this piece for the first time and so like this song just reminds me of like just feeling so over leveled for the first time in the whole game and like just feeling awesome um, but yeah it's kind of creepy it's got that kind of atmospheric it's got the little um, chimes and chimes the very are in there. like pulsing like it's, it's, it's almost it's the suspense. same sound bite of the Ooh, yeah. noise from Ocarina which is cool and I think that's on purpose right but just put into kind of like that creepy like uh, ghostly almost which it should be ghostly right mm -hmm. it's like these these figures are down here they've been frozen in time for 
however long, hundreds of years. Yeah. So they are ghosts from a past age, right? Just kind of chilling uh, that would they were at the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> which is kind of cool and kind of creepy. I remember this fun. moment. I remember liking this moment quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I was a little nervous. I think I tried to stealth it and I was like sneaking around and taking each one yeah. out. Though I'm not normally a stealth. I'm kind of, I kind of go all over the place. If I feel stealth, I play it. If I feel button mashy, I play it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great moment. That's cool. That one makes sense that there's an ocarina callback. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, that was... In the, and I didn't get that. Honestly, the piece where all the sages uh, along the... the stained glass The thing? stained glass, that yeah. they're all the sages. I didn't pick up on that until really recently. Because, um, like, even I played Wind Waker again after I'd played Ocarina. So, like, theoretically, I should have picked up on it, but I just didn't. <laughs> You're like, look at all this lore. Like, oh, I wonder what it's so about. So cool. Whatever. Yeah. And then it was the, actually, I think it was my most recent playthrough of Wind Waker, which was, I mean, still, gosh, probably a year or two ago at this point. Um, but <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> I know, right? I, was, I love the game. Um, but yeah, when uh, that most recent playthrough was when I was like, oh my, look, it's, look, it's, I see all the, hey, yeah. it's that guy, you know. It's the sages. Mm hmm. Yep. So that's a pretty cool part. The only bad thing about that part is this when Tetra becomes not cool anymore. Right. Because she yes. just gets locked in the basement after that. Which we spoke about in our Princess Zelda's episode. <laughs> see, it all comes back. <laughs> such a great, they were setting her up with such a great storyline. And then I think they just, just forgot, not forgot, but it was, well, we know why. No, we know what happened there. And what, yeah. what, uh, yeah, she just ended up, I think, uh, a casualty of the timeline uh, yeah. of well, the of game the production development timeline. timeline. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Not the like plot timeline. Because she's one of the strongest Zeldas depicted so far. Yeah. Oh, Tetra is amazing. Mm -hmm. I adore Tetra so much. And then like she and she like hates it when she gets the transformation. She's like, "What is this? What is happening?" Yeah. Um. And then the, to me, it's like almost a little bit. And I'm I'm critiquing. <gasps> is it lampshady? Baker here. Oh. It's it's just a little bit like. I, it's a bit of a break from her character. Like, I don't believe that Tetra would take that and just be like, okay, yeah, I'll stay locked in the basement. Like, I think Tetra right. would have just... Even in the dress, she'd be like, screw this. 100%. She would be ripping the bottom like six inches yeah. off that hem, tying it up at the... You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, be like, no, 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 son. We're going. This is my this is my boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take you <laughs> where you need to go or I'm out of here. You know, maybe even she'd cut and run. You know what I mean? If this was... I, I'm, I'm going too, too plot heavy, but... um. That I never liked that part, but the rest of that scene is very cool. Super cool moment, for right? sure. Do we we have one left? We have one left. What is this? It is a deep, deep cut. Ooh, set this one up for me. Yeah, you're not gonna have any idea what it is. You're just gonna play it. I'm just gonna play it. Okay. Because I'm gonna have to like explain. Uh, it. It's cool though. This is kind of a fortune teller vibe. Or it's one of the shops, or we're down in a grotto underneath one of the islands. <laughs> is, it the, is it the um, is it the the mansion island where you go down below? No. Mm -mm. That was a cool one though. I liked that uh, that island. <laughs> Just went over. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. So what this is? Do, do, do. Um, this is a variation on the Zelda theme. This is, um, so you know the part when you like have to like go find Medley and then you have to find um, Makar, the little Korok guy. Yeah. Um, and then you have to like awaken the sage within them or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is the, the one, the sage Fado, Fado, whatever, the, the um, sage that is with Makar. Yeah. Which this is not the song they play, which actually I didn't pick that um, one, but I'm gonna grab it um, really quick. Um, this is beautiful. Isn't it so cool? It's, I'm loving the I'm loving the return to some of the Ocarina tracks here. The reinterpretation of yeah. it is very cool. Um, but yeah, so this will be like a bonus one just because actually this theme, I did really like this theme. Um, and I wanted this one as my ringtone, actually, but it's too short. Like, it's just really, really short. Um, but so this one you may, now that you have um, Makar and, you know, that whole piece uh, on on the brain um <laughs> now that we're like in that mindset um but yeah it's called Makar's awakening so that's the part oh. when you like you go underneath the waterfall yeah. right and he's like playing yes and then that's the part where the second sage comes in so but this is the the sage the, the guy that comes in to play with you get it you're with me yeah yeah no yeah right i'm trying to remember the exact it's in one of those little micro islands right 
Where it's, do you live? Um, so it's actually on the Deku Island, um, mm. but it's so before you get in. So like when you first go to that island, um, you go up over the waterfalls, whatever, to get yeah. inside. Mm -hmm. um, and this, it's out front. It's under one of the waterfalls. And there's just a tiny little grotto there. Oh, okay. And that's where you find Makar. Um, and he's playing his little tune. And then you have to like do the thing to awaken, whatever. Yeah, cool. Um, but Excellent. Yeah. Wow. So super cool. Yeah, so that what one was a, a bit of a deep cut. But yeah. That's a oh, good I one. love it. I'm enthralled by the one that the one that you played just a bit ago. I'm kind of still coming off of that one yeah, actually a little bit. So good. Wait, wait, I wish I would know more where that one is in the game. Are you playing it again? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's so good because it's it's not the Hyrule Field theme. See, but it's doing different notes. Yeah. Is this like Link's Awake? Or is this like Link's Awake? What is this? It's one of these things where I know the melody, but yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, you're like, where is it from? Let me see. Bom. Oh, no, no, I think it might be the theme. Bom, bom. Bom, bom. Cool though. I'm yeah. loving it. The interpretation's great. It's very cool. I just tried to Google what the origin yeah. Anything? Of theme was and nothing came up. Oof. I was trying to bring it in. We'll just look I'll just look a fool. Yep, that's I'm fine okay. With it. I'm we're fine with we're it. comfortable with that. <laughs> Too cool. So major takeaways. What one of the things I'm pulling from this episode is that you have a lot of um anchors to these songs and the things you were experiencing while you were playing the game. Yeah. Which I think is great. I think that's that's the best way that Zelda music can be. For sure. Well, that's, yeah, I think that, uh, and again, more as I, I had so much fun prepping for this episode because I just like <laughs> literally for days was just like listening to like YouTube mashups of like the whole Wind Waker soundtrack to like try to like get the feel for like at least the different vibes. Cause I know like, um, like, so like the Mulgara theme is like one of the most famous ones yeah. from, from the Wind Waker soundtrack. Um, so I'm sure some listeners will be like, where's that theme? Um, and it, I just didn't, I personally, I'm not a fan of the boss themes cause they stress me out. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is a very personal list that yeah, we've to say, it's, it's my favorites. Um, it's not necessarily the best song. That's the new. From the that's the new episode title. Mallory's favorite Mallory's music favorite from Wind Waker. <laughs> Wind Waker songs. Yeah. Um. But yeah, because it's just I, I feel like I picked the ones that um uh, capture why Wind Waker is my favorite game. Love it. Right. Captures that childlike energy, that like really nostalgic vibe that makes me love this game so much. So yeah. Oh my gosh, amazing. It was a nice little trip for me too because I haven't <laughs> recalled the Wind Waker music recently. Mostly I'm experiencing it through uh, low chill vibe oh, yeah, remixes yeah, yeah. and like jazz Which remixes. Some great like ones. Saying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, actually I just realized it's getting to a point now where I'm starting to conflate memories and identify with some of these themes more <laughs> with just them being the remixes and the yeah, in different like editions. Yeah, the like and chill version. Than the literal. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. moment in the in the dungeon or moment on the island or whatever. Yeah, I have to which be is fair. Oh, I just love the overworld theme. It was so great when I was editing that podcast and listening to the <laughs> remix two years ago. You, oh, you, you kind of did the transatlantic accent there. That yeah. was <laughs> well, you know, it's all it's, wow. it's memories. <laughs> well, sir, <laughs> well, that was more like Tony's Lobster than I do there. What'd you do? <laughs> like, ah, oh, see, I went like that's right, you know, like Tony's gangster. That was different, different energy. No good times, you see. <laughs> Listening to the low cheat, the low kill. Okay, I can't even do it. Can't even do it. Uh, all right, excellent. So, well, this was fantastic, Mallory. Thank you so much for making the stop here yeah. on your way, technically back to Michigan. To Michigan, to be a Michigander. Yes. Michigander. <laughs> Uh, this was a total blast. And if people want to uh, find you or learn a little bit more about the stuff you've been doing these days, because you've been pretty active. It's actually been pretty exciting kind of following you lately. Yeah. Um, busy what bee. can they do? Yeah. So you can go. I mean, I'm on literally all the social medias at MJ Kuhn Books, um, K-U-H-N. And it's all one word. Um, or just MJKuhn.com has all of my links on there, too. Um, I also do co-host a podcast uh, of my own now as well, um, and it's about books. Um, so it's called SFF Addicts. So SFF stands for sci-fi and fantasy. Um, I and, did not know that. Oh, hey, it's I actually was going to ask you. I didn't want to ask you on air, yes, but I was like, what does like, SFF what does that mean? stand for? Yeah. Um, and we, what we do is we just talk to um, sci-fi and fantasy authors about 
their books, their craft, what makes them tick and how they write their books. So if, uh, if anyone listening is like kind of uh, a writer or, you know, someone who is um, seeking publication or you just like want to learn how, you know, Christopher Paolini developed the aliens for his newer books. Right. Uh, all that stuff is on that podcast. Um, cool. Also, sorry, one last plug. I Please. was a kind of busy bee. Um, but <laughs> if you want um, a taste of my, because I'm also an author, if you want a taste of my like writing, but you are like, I don't know if I want to buy a book, which fair. Do you know what's hysterical um, right now is you've gone into author pitch tone in your voice. Am I? <laughs> I support it. I fully support it. I, can it you tell? It sounds like I, you're at like a I book do signing this, right like, now. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. But I have. Uh, so if you sign up for my newsletter on my website, I have a free mm-hmm. novelette. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So it's just completely free. It's very. Um, based on like D and oh, it's, it's its own universe uh, yeah it's its own universe it's like a um basically a, a, it's about a wizard who is a, on an adventure with his party mm-hmm. and he loses his magic halfway through the adventure and has to fake it um for the rest of the mission um and it's, it's just funny and it's a fun time so is your you is the sci-fi book that you were writing is it is it like sci-fi tech is it ships and spaceships or is it sci-fi fantasy and magic so the sci-fi book that i've written, i know it's not out yet no, i just yeah, can't help myself i'm so no, sorry it's cyberpunk Cyberpunk, okay, mm-hmm. cool. All it's right. very fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've already got all kinds of weird stuff in the works. But, but right now you've got two books out. Yes, two books out right now, Among Thieves and Thickest Thieves, and they are both fantasy heist stories. And we actually found so. your books at, was it the Barnes & Noble <gasps> downtown did, in Chicago and today? it was so fun. I was not expecting to see them there. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I was a little disappointed because I've looked for them before in the past yeah. year. I've gone to that. When I get out of class, I'll go there. And I'm like, oh, well, I wonder if Mallory's book's here or whatever. And today <laughs> I learned that they were exactly in the aisle I almost always go to. But here's the thing. <laughs> the Zelda manga and the Star Wars books are on the other side of that aisle. And I've been facing 180 you degrees the wrong direction. Get very distracted. And it's fair. You know, you see you know? your the books of your heart. And see you're like, oh, my gosh. And right behind me the whole time was Among Thieves. <laughs> my book's like waving like, hey, David, hey. I'm over here. <laughs> yeah, no, it was cool. It was very cool and fun to see. All right, Mallory, this was an absolute blast. Thank you so much. People can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Raptor Paint. They can find the show, Another Zelda Podcast. Really mostly go to our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com. But if you are so inclined, we are Another Zelda Pod on Twitter and Another Zelda Podcast on Instagram. And we're on, of course, the Spotify's and the Apple Podcasts and all the things, YouTube and the rest. You can uh, find a bunch of our blogs, some of which Mallory has written herself over on our website, which is great. We've got an awesome library of blogs there. And really, I think that's all I need to say. It's getting weird because I've been doing this for six seasons, this <laughs> right? outro. Like, but, wait, but, am I missing anything? <laughs> but like every Zelda game, every episode is someone's first episode. Yes, exactly. And so there's all the things. Of course. Marvelous. Well, this was a blast, Mallory, and I have no idea when you'll be back on a show, but anytime you're caught passing through Chicago, right? I mean, I think it's just going to be a staple. I love it. And we got to figure it out. I'm here for it. Cool. Well, thank you so much. This was an absolute blast. Yes, this is so fun. Thanks for nerding out with music or with Beyond Music today. It was so fun.